It's a long way from a small dojo in suburban Christchurch to the traditional dojos of Japan. But for Andre Batal, the latter has become his second home. After following his dream of becoming one of the world's most well-renowned karate instructors. I started karate, uh, my mother actually started me in karate when I was five. And uh, I didn't like karate until about the mid-80s. Mid and uh, finally, I, when I could do my uh, black belt, my first dan, then I started liking karate. And uh, so, yeah, I got forced to do it from a young age, and it really made me enjoy it uh, later on because I stuck with it and started getting some benefits. As a young boy growing up in Christchurch and attending Kashmir High, Andre's talent for karate became apparent, which in turn led him to the country where karate has its origins. Well, I visited Japan a lot for karate, but uh, my wife is Japanese, so also I wanted to train with the best of the best again and do it for a longer period of time. So yeah, that's the reason, one of the main reasons. And the type of karate Andre practices is the real deal. There's no shadow boxing here, the contact is potentially lethal and the blows punishing. A style he learnt from one of the world's best karate instructors. Well, um, I was just training regularly in, in Tokyo and I was training at the main club and uh, Asai Sensei, who was the chief instructor, he wouldn't really teach very much at the main dojo. All the other instructors there, they'll be teaching all the time. And uh, he just spotted me. And one day, uh, after training, came up to me and offered me some help. And from there it really started. He started showing me techniques and saying, do this, change your movement like this. And when well, you know, you're a New Zealander, what are you doing here? And all this sort of thing. And uh, yeah, so he really just took me under his wing. And Andre says to have credibility in the karate you practice, it's important that the style you learn has a traceable lineage. My teacher is uh, Tetsuhiko Asai and his teacher was uh, Nakayama, Masatoshi Nakayama, who was the head of the JKA, the Japan Karate Association, and his teacher was Gichin Funakoshi, who was the founder of modern day karate, and his teacher was Itoso Sensei, and goes right back, way back. So um, they're all very famous teachers, and uh, so it's a uh, good pedigree, is very important in studying something. He does, however, admit learning from one of the best instructors in Japan did have its downsides. Unfortunately, I got a lot of jealousy from people, you know, even in Japan, because he wasn't a regular teacher at the main dojo at that time. So uh, people were a little jealous, but after a while, he started using me for courses around the world, and yeah, I was just very lucky. Andre says the style of karate he has learnt is very unlike anything you will see in an American martial arts film or even in many New Zealand karate dojos. The Sai Sensei really was the best. I mean, he was the best. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I really, all my advanced techniques, they come from a Sai Sensei. And uh, his technique is uh, very special. His body is very soft and his power, the, the power he generated up until he was 71 was just incredible. So he taught me how to use my body well and to generate power from relaxation. And that's something that means you can transcend you know, your physical power, muscle power. You can use your joints and your, your bones to make power. So it's a very different um, point. But yeah, he, he, I, I attribute everything that I learned to a Sai Sensei now because it took me to the next level. And now Andre is a highly qualified instructor himself, having reached the level of a six darn black belt. And although the sport is very serious, Andre still can have a joke about the belt he's worked so hard for. Um, oh well, it holds, my belt holds my pants up. Um, it, it keeps it from falling down. Um, yeah, it's taken me a long time to get six darn, and I was very fortunate to get six darn. But um, that level is a very interesting stage because um, it, it's kind of like getting PhD in university. To get to six down, you have to uh, develop your own way. Like, you have to have complete control of traditional karate. Like, we have 26 traditional kata, and we have five junro kata, and then we have many other kata which are very specialized. And uh, for the six down, you have to have that all mastered, and then also you have to have your own style on top of that, your own way. So basically interpret karate for yourself. And so that's a very uh, interesting phase. An interesting phase that has also included Andre creating a blog that's read by hundreds of thousands of followers worldwide. So it's had about half a million readers. Um, and that, that's just been great, you know, it's been wonderful. But a lot of people ask me to run that uh, blog or website. And uh, it's got a lot of people who I've taught around the world 
they come and check it out. And uh, of course, all the instructors in Japan, they like it. So it's really great. Meaning that even though Andre may be a world away from Christchurch, he can still help impart his knowledge to people here. Because he says there aren't a lot of karate gyms practicing traditional karate here. Most karate we see in New Zealand is sports karate. It's or it's a, a full contact karate where you get in the ring and you fight. Um, real karate is uh, about perfecting yourself, becoming better in yourself. And everyone starts at a different point. But um, karate is a self-defense. Sports karate is about winning points. Traditional karate is about killing the opponent with a single punch. Two points, so taking the opponent out. And that might seem really aggressive to some people, but karate, this type of karate doesn't create fighters. It creates somebody who can, if they're attacked, they can do one single blow that finishes a, 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 an attack. So it's a self-defense method versus a fighting method. And although the ultimate aim in this type of karate is delivering one finishing blow, Andre says surprisingly there are very few injuries. There's a lot of um, camaraderie in karate, like it's not just, you know, you're doing things by yourself. When we train in the dojo, we all sweat together and, um, you yeah, know, it's, it's great, you know, you work together and you get some, you lose a bit of blood sometimes and, you know, accidents happen and you lose a lot of sweat and you become very close with the people you train with. So in a lot of ways it's a group activity as well. I've, uh, in Japan, I have my club in Japan, I have lots of families. So I have uh, old people and I have young children and I'll have whole families together. So everybody can practice and it's very safe training because even though you get a bump and bruise sometimes, you might get a, a, a bleeding nose, it's still, you know, it's not, not as dangerous as, say, rugby or so even soccer. It's, uh, you know, anyone can do it. So you get a very close family tie with your students and seniors. But to get to such a level and to be in complete control of your actions and movements takes a lot of practice. Every day I practice. I practice every day. But it's... Uh, it's a natural for me to practice every day. Like my teacher, Tetsuhiko Asai, Asai Sensei, he said to me, you train every day. If you're unwell, you practice. You practice every day. And uh, he, his saying was, if stop, I die. He used to say all the time. And uh, so a little bit of training every day. I try to train at least an hour, two hours a day. 365 days of the year. And, uh, and then I teach people as well. But Andre has plenty of motivation. Karate is so good for your inside mind. Like, uh, you know, it, it makes you feel more positive. Like, if I train, if you train, it's hard to train every day. Sometimes I don't feel like training. I'm not every day I don't go, oh God, I want to do karate today. I don't do that. But some days, if I don't feel like that and I push myself, I always feel good afterwards. And uh, that's the key. I think it gives you a more positive mind and also it helps you to unload a lot of stress from your daily life. So if you put a little bit of time into practice, um, you don't have to be a Buddhist monk. Even if you do 10 minutes a day, people can practice a little bit a day. Any sort of exercise is good, but I think karate is better because it's using everything. Your breathing, your legs, your arms, your waist, um, and also your mental power is used as well. So it's very... Uh, Therapeutic. And although he retired from competition a couple of years ago, Andre hasn't ruled out a return to the ring. The tournament for me is, um, when I was younger it was all about a lot of, there's a lot of ego involved, but now for me just to enter is more of a challenge for myself, you know, just to enjoy it and, um, you know, I don't mind winning or losing, just give my best shot and seek a nippon, a finishing blow, that's what I want to find. So um, for me that's more the motivation. So. But whatever the future holds for Andre Battelle, it can pretty safely be said that it will involve karate in some form or another.